Hello and welcome to this a little bit different video. Today we will be reacting um, to the Instagram stream of Harper Wings, which they posted uh, yesterday. So this is as soon as I physically <laughs> was able to sit down in front of a camera. Um, the entire stream took about one, one and a half hours. Now we won't get through all of that, so I've cut it down and we will be focusing entirely on scale 500 because there was also uh, quite a lot of talk about scale 200 and other scales. But as we are focusing on scale 500 here on this channel, that's what we will um, go through. At the end of the video, we will also have a very quick uh, run through a list of all the different models that were mentioned in this stream and what Harper had to say about them. So before we get going with the stream, I just want to say that, first of all, I think it's really positive that Harper actually did something like that. Now, it's part of their virtual um, Open Days event, but um, as far as I know, it's the first time they've done a stream like that. And I think it's a really good initiative because collectors from around the world had the opportunity to get in touch directly with Harper, ask them questions, and Harper was actually also really good at answering if not all, but quite a few questions throughout the stream. And I think it's, let's say, credit where credit's due. I've been criticizing them for not communicating well with the community. So when they do it, I think credit is deserved. I should also quickly mention before we get going, the stream was bilingual. So they answered questions both in German and in English, depending on what language the question was asked in. Um, so there will also be a few bits here that are in German, but don't worry, I will kind of translate it while we are going through the video. So the first uh, part that we are seeing here, um, they had a question regarding business jets. And so the, the, the very quick answer from them is that in scale 500, I don't, they don't expect to make any business jets. But they talk about the accessory sets that they made many years ago where they had small business jets. But they don't really see that as an option for making new models. So the point is that they think that many business jets have very simple liveries. And honestly speaking, I think they kind of missed the point here because I don't think anyone really expects to get business jets from Happy Wings with elaborate liveries. Um, I personally would be very happy with a very basic livery on a business jet. The point is that we want business jets. Uh, we don't need any logos on it or anything else. Just some very simple livery would be fine. That's the whole point of business jets. Most business jets are very simple in their liveries. Um, and as this question was also posted um, by an um, English-speaking collector, um, the question was about EasyJet. Why don't we do any EasyJet models? or um, Ryanair models, for example. Um, the, the reason is basically they just don't want, want us to. Um, they're also, um, they're very strict um, legally. So they say EasyJet don't want them to make um, models. We have to take their word for that. Um, unfortunate. Then they actually, um, <laughs> they took a question for me. I had asked about albino models. Uh, so uh, models without any liveries. Um, it's something I have asked for a few times. I know many others in the community have asked Hapa about that. Um, I think we see a clear demand for it. I know there are other manufacturers that actually also have done so. Um, so let's see what they say about that. Would you consider to release albino models? Um, albino, yeah, those are the, basically the white models mm -hmm. without any decoration. Um, there are two parts to this. First of all, we do not see any, any demand that, sufficient demand that justifies a production run of a certain model or two. And then if we, okay. if we start one model... <laughs> okay, well, I mean, if they don't see a clear demand, I guess, again, we have to take their word for it. I don't really agree, but um, obviously I'm not the one making the models, so do a complete series, somebody would want not the A320, they would want an A330, somebody would want a 737 or a 747 to customize. Um, that's one part. Of course we would like part, to have, have multiple versions um, and different all, types. Our name will be um, brought in connection with this model. We do not know what will happen with these Albino models. Um, 
somebody perhaps produces a EasyJet model from this blank model, and, and we're not allowed to do that, and posts that on, on Instagram, on his Facebook page, and says, okay, this is an EasyJet model I built from a Herba 500 scan model. I mean, we be getting into big trouble. I can't really argue with if, if they say they have a legal issue with making white models that people then customize into other airlines which they don't hold the license to. Uh, I don't know what the legality is of that, but um, I think perhaps, for me it sounds like they're being very cautious. I mean, the fact is, and Happer must know that, is that we are taking models from them with liveries and turning them into custom models. Um, so, so I don't really see the difference there. Would you uh, consider to sell spare parts separately um, as you do it with trucks and cars? Um, actually, no. Uh, we, don't have any, we don't have any plans to do this at this time. We, the only thing that we have been thinking about is offering um, landing gear as replacement parts. Um, you know, accidents do happen. Um, so we do see um, some some demand for these parts there that people at home can, can drill out the remains of the, of the of the broken landing gear and replace that. Exactly. Um, but even even if we're talking about landing gear, we're talking about landing gear for a lot of different air, airplane types, and um, the we do have a different set of customers compared to the cars and trucks um, part of our company. Um, I shouldn't have put cars and trucks in my question, he's focusing too much on that. So if we would do something like that, we would probably and most definitely just, just concentrate on the landing gear part. And, and that would be perfectly fine. I wanted, wanted to do a first trial this year actually, here at the, hmm. at the open house day here in uh, Dietenhofen. We will um, be keeping that idea and we'll hopefully do that maybe soon. Um, these will not be parts, however, that we will be offering through a catalog, um, through our retail system. It might be something that we just offer here only in the shop or maybe on our website. Um, so really just a limited distribution because we do see some demand for it, but um, it's more as a replacement part and not as an accessory and we believe. I mean, I think this is a very... <laughs> I'd like to say that it's positive that they're thinking about making replacement parts, especially landing gear. I think landing gear is the basic part. If they made anything else, that would be amazing, but that's not as necessary. But why limit it to only selling it at your headquarters? I don't understand. If you, if you think there's a limited demand, surely that demand won't get bigger by only selling it at Harper headquarters. What's the logic in that? Please help her. Just put it on your website so people can order it from around the world because your customers are from around the world. Then noch gleich erstmal eine Nachfrage GSE 1 zu 500. Then the popular question was about a GSE. Even we are more dabei momentan eigentlich die ganz alten Sachen zu ersetzen durch neue Fahrzeuge. Die ganz alten Treppen haben wir jetzt. Uh, this is, yeah. So they're saying that they are mainly focused right now on replacing older stuff that they have released previously. Um, also da wird's, wird's sicherlich immer wieder mal was geben. Sicherlich nicht jetzt in jedem zwei Monats. But don't expect to have that on a regular basis. He said, don't expect it to come every second month or something like that. Um, Again, I think it's positive that they are, they are acknowledging that there's a demand for GSE. I think it, it's great that they want to renew some of the stuff. Um, and throughout the stream, it was also quite clear that they were open to new ideas. They were actually at some point specifically asking people to comment uh, what type of GSE they were interested in. Um, so I think we can realistically expect more from Happer Wings. But obviously, I think they will always focus on the planes, and then GC will come after that. Um, but anything, <laughs> anything they can do will be much appreciated by quite a few uh, people. <laughs> then, uh, yeah, the next point was actually the A320neo that I asked a question about uh, specifically if they would ever improve it, because I think we all know that the model isn't ideal. Yes, we know. Um, we've. Um it's kind of tricky, actually, because um, you have to change a lot of different things. You cannot just change 
um, the engine itself, um, or the pylon, or the, it's, it's, it's a combination of the angle of the wings, it's, it's part of the pylon. I mean, it's positive that they acknowledge that they know there's something wrong with the model. It's an issue, um, it, it, we're, we're talking about really um, um, very, very, very tiny measurements that are, that are less than, far less, or a fraction of, of a millimeter. And um, we're just trying to fi still find out the best way to handle this because everything we change does mean an investment in new tooling. So we have to find a way to make it look nice but also to make it feasible, to make it economical. So we are, we, it is something we're aware of and we'll hopefully have a solution soon. Well, überhaupt Nahverkehrsmodelle war die Frage. Also, also ich glaube, das habe ich vorhin, es ging in der um amerikanische Geschichte. Then there was quite a few questions regarding single aisle aircraft, uh, mainly from North America. Um, <laughs> I don't know if that was because people think I should have more at Philadelphia Airport. Um, no, but I think obviously there's also quite a few collectors in North America. So he's talking about that the uh, North American wide bodies are selling considerably better than single aisle, um, which might explain why we get so many more of the wide bodies. But, um, but they will continue to make a single aisle. He says not as frequently as many people might want to, but they will work on it. And then there was a question, this didn't come from me, I just want to point that out, but someone asked about a timely releases. Uh, so basically why they have so many delays. But they did answer it, which is again a positive thing. Um, so let's see what they say. Timely release. Um, <laughs> uh, timely release is a big uh, topic. Um, there are many issues that, that um, cause us to be late, uh, not just due to Corona, of course, even beforehand. Uh, so again, good. They acknowledge it's, they have delays and it's not just related to Corona. That's good. Uh, we did have a lot of, or are still having a lot of issues just on the production side that we have um, capacity issues that we've been trying to solve for, I think, the past two or three years. Um, we do have larger facilities now. We have partners who have um, increased the size of the factories dramatically. Um, so right now we're actually catching up a lot. Um, so they've expanded their facilities. That's good. I mean, that should improve. I mean, one, it should enable them to produce more models at the same time, and hopefully it will help out with delays. For example, since July, August releases, we did cut those back quite a bit to give us some more time and, and more capacity to catch up rather than announce constantly new models in, in, in a huge amount and just running late again. So we are you know, trying to, um, in, in, in a certain aspect, still offer new items, but also um, focus on catching up on the other items as well, just to get those onto the market quicker. Um, Corona has, or COVID-19 has made things more complicated for us. Fair it's enough. Not just the production side, that production was, 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 was shut down for almost two months. See, that's interesting. He says they, they had a production stop or the production was stopped, uh, shut down for two months. Why would you not just communicate about that when it happened? I'm pretty sure it was Gemini Jets, correct me if I'm wrong, but Gemini Jets had a production stop as well. And they actually uh, sent messages out on various social media channels that they had this production stop. And again, it's, it's perfectly, it's great that they're talking about it here. I'm really happy about this, it's great information because it, it, it really just uh, clears up a lot of things. But why not just communicate about that when it happened? Because I think everyone would have understood uh, that there would be increased delays on models if you were forced to shut down production because of a pandemic. Uh, that's obvious, but the situation was that everyone knew there was a pandemic, everyone could speculate that there would probably be an impact on production, but no one had any confirmation from HAPA. So, but again, it's positive that they at least say it now. Um. But it's also the logis logistics side. I mean, we have to catch up is one thing, but then we also have to get things shipped out. Um, we've seen a lot of delays there, just also getting raw material to the factory, 
just getting the finished product uh, either to the harbor, to the airport, to the train stations, because we do also have uh, uh, rail transportation now, which is, which is quite nice, saves us a couple of weeks. So we are trying to do different methods just to simply catch up and get things back on track. I have to acknowledge that they did take pretty much all of my questions, so I have to say thank you for that. Um, and the question I had here was about the new special uh, aircraft they released specifically for the open days, which is the new 767-300 of Iceland Air, but with the addition of the DB Schenker logo. A great model, um, a nice uh, model with a nice uh, history because it was flying around for a few weeks during the corona crisis between Munich and China um, and was basically converted into a freighter. But, and those of you who are collecting models would probably already know that, it's uh, the model has exactly the same registration code as the 767 Iceland Air that HAPA released six or seven months ago which makes this model, let's say, quite a lot less exciting. So I asked them about this model to see why they chose this for their highlight model of the year. Actually quite simple, um, because we had uh, enough quantity of this very model on stock and we were in quite a hurry to get things finished um, in time for the open house day, or the, or the virtual digital house day. Um, we, the aircraft started flying end of April, if I remember correctly, and the, actually the very first one had the registration that we had on our Iceland Air models. So we, instead of selling um, the regular release, we took these, we took the quantity away from, from our stock, added the, uh, the Deutsche Bahn Schenker logos, produced a new packaging for it, and then offered it. Um, so we had something special. For the occasion, for you know, for um, for the. But it's not special if you. You've literally just taken the models you didn't sell, put an extra sticker on it, put it in a new box, and that's it. How is that special? I I, I understand that of course there might have been some time constraints. Maybe I mean the open days shouldn't be a surprise for you because I mean you do that every year. Maybe there were some additional con time constraints getting models because of Corona. I acknowledge that and maybe then you just didn't have a choice. I just find it really difficult to call this model special because you literally admit that what you did was you just took the model that you had enough of, put an extra sticker on it and that's it. It's not that it's a bad model, it's just... I hope you understand that from a collector's point of view, it really doesn't feel special. Um, then there was a question regarding Lufthansa. There was a lot of questions about Lufthansa models, um, which is also one of the, if not the airline they sell most models of. Um, let's see what they say. So the question is basically all the different aircraft types Lufthansa is flying on, what are you making? Will you be in the new livery, obviously? Oh, this is great. So basically he says, um, print, in principle, they will make all aircraft types of Lufthansa uh, in the new livery and, which is exciting, also um, Star Alliance, let's see. Okay, so he says basically, we can also expect Star Alliance, but probably not as much as the standard livery because they sell more of the standard liveries than of Alliance liveries, regardless if it's Star Alliance or One World or Sky Team. But he acknowledges that it kind of is missing in, in the collection. So they will definitely be working on that. And we can expect, I think, from what we hear here, to get not just all different aircraft types of Lufthansa, but also uh, Lufthansa aircraft in Star Alliance livery, which would be great. Obviously even better if they also would <laughs> show some other airlines with Star Alliance, Sky Team, and One World. Now, of course, we've specifically talked here about Lufthansa. The next question I'm also taking in because um, that was regarding Wizz Air, and I can say the news is not bad. Wizz Air A321 Neo. Wizz Air, sind wir immer wieder in Kontakt. Da ändert sich halt leider. So he says they are in contact with them. Sehr sehr schnell. 
Um, kaum hatten wir gedacht, wir hätten jetzt... And apparently they were very close uh, on, <laughs> on getting a, a deal, um, but just before Corona. So now it's on hold. ...jetzigen Situation, weil es einfach sehr schwierig ist. Mm -hmm. Aber wir hoffen, also wir sind auf jeden Fall gerade bei Wizz Air dran. Um, das fehlt definitiv und hoffen, dass wir weiter was machen können. So that's really, really awesome. Um, so they have been in, in, in contact with Wizz Air. They have been quite advanced in talks. Um, I think from what I would interpret from what he says, I think pretty close to having a deal, um, but just before Corona. So now obviously it's all a bit, um, they basically need to reestablish contact with the airline and, and see where they are, but they seem to be quite hopeful. So that could be quite exciting, perhaps in the future, in the near future maybe, to get a new Wizz Air model from Harper Wings. That would be quite good. Uh, then I, <laughs> the next one, I, had, I asked them a question uh, and I asked them the question uh, regarding quality control. I think we all know that quality has suffered quite a bit. Um, <laughs> let, let's just play it. Then, um, uh, could you talk about a little bit about Herpa's quality control? Did you have a quality control? <laughs> Uh, Good joke. Um, there, are, there, are certain, there are a lot of different steps. I'm not exactly sure what, uh, what the question is asking for specifically, but uh, we do have a quality control in various steps, starting from hardware. Yeah, that was a problem because I didn't read the full question, so now the guy doesn't know what he's talking, what he's supposed to answer. We also have to uh, take care of the quote requirements or change requests from the airlines, um, get that fixed in there. <laughs> See, um, I think this is quite comedic because we asked them about quality control. Now, the moderator didn't give him the full question, so the poor guy answering didn't fully know what he should answer, and then the live feed cuts out. <laughs> well, they, 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 they did re-establish the live feed, so they, they started a new live feed, basically. Um, so, and I think even they were looking at the question while the feed had cut out, um, so let's see what he answers here. I, I'm not sure he still fully answers the question, but let's at least hear what he says about help us quality control. Sorry about that. Um, we had a glitch here and had to restart. Things. It did indeed have a glitch. Uh, we were talking about uh, assembly of the models, for example. I mean, every, every part is basically hand assembled. Um, it's, it's, I mean, things, things just simply happen. I mean, uh, as long as people work um, and, and do apply things manually, there will be slightly, um, um, there will be stabilizers with, um, ang with different angles, these kind of things, or landing gear tires that might be a bit crooked or something like that. That is not something that we can fully um, stop um, from happening. Um, we will, of course, we, we do see what um, what we can do. The issue is also, however, that we have more and more details added to the models, if it's um, printing-wise. See, or... the point he makes here, firstly, is fair enough. Yes, if you handcraft things, there will be some small variations, and it won't be 100 perfect every time. That's fair enough. Um, but then he starts talking about that they're adding more and more details. Maybe I'm just, I'm struggling to find all these new details he's talking about. I mean, if you, if, you, if you look at standard models, I'm sorry, but they certainly haven't increased the amount of detailing there. So I don't know what that is really um, about. That's something where we train the, the assembly workers to have, to give them a good impression, um, so that a good perspective of what they're doing, um, give them own possibility to, to, to check. That's where we need to get to, because if we do it, if you have a quality control manager, he or she can only do so much and, and do um, random, random checks um, for these things. So um, that is something that, is, that will always be an issue. Um, we, we're doing it all that we can to, to improve on this, of course. Okay, I mean, I don't think we will ever agree on this. I, I, I think it's fair enough to say, yes, hand assembly, that won't always be 100% 100 perfect. Fair enough. Um, 
I don't really see where you have this massive increase in detailing. Um, <laughs> maybe you can elaborate, uh, but I don't really see it. Um, I think it's also obviously uh, the quality control managers can't control every single aircraft. So it's also fair the point that he says that they uh, want the assembly workers in the factory to basically make sure that the models are as they should be. But I just think he's missing the point here that we are in a situation where this is clearly not happening and it has been better in the past. So what has happened between maybe two or three years ago to today? I, I want I want them I, I want to <laughs> I want to acknowledge whenever they 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 kind of acknowledge that there are issues. I think that's that's always a good thing. Um, I still think that there is room for improvement and I would hope that they also see that. Um, but the good thing is they then also answered my question regarding new, the new box design. Um, anyone who knows my channel knows that I am not a big fan and I know that quite a few aren't either. Um, so let's see what they have to say about that. Maybe we can go back, please. Well, we won't go back. I mean, especially not not in the short term. We might, as, as we've done, we've reviewed the packaging, we've reviewed it constantly, and just thought it was time to make a bit of a change. But a bit of a change. Um, it's nowadays we started. It was time for a change. Fair on enough. A couple of years back. <laughs> and I don't expect a short-term change. Obviously, you will have a huge production line already working on this, but... You have Flickr now, you have Jet Pose, you have Plan Spiders, you have Airliners. You have all these sites where everybody can compare their model to the original. That was the original intention of, of, the, of the picture, actually, of placing that on the box. And uh, we've had a lot of... Uh, troubles with these with these images, not just getting images, but being allowed to use certain images because we had. Okay, so your intention was to have pictures on the box, so that people could compare the model inside the box with the aircraft in real life, and you say not everyone had internet or was able to, or there weren't these websites where you could find all these images of planes. And that has changed, so now you don't need to have pictures. Fair enough, if that's the case. I would, however, like to say that not always the pictures you put on your boxes were actually the planes you had inside. Um, but, have you seen what your competitors are doing? Because they make boxes without pictures, but they look way better than your boxes. You can make nice, looking boxes without pictures of planes. Airline A said, no, you're not allowed to use this picture because on the back there's a, there's a competitor B on it and you're not allowed to use that picture. Look for another one. Um, support from the airline itself has, has dramatically decreased. Um, on that side, you know, that they have press uh, libraries, uh, media libraries that we can source from. Um, some of the pictures also on the smaller models were just not that nice. You could not really recognize what we actually wanted to show. Sometimes it just turned out too, too dark, too small. It didn't, didn't really look nice. And the, and, the, and the advantage of the new back box is actually um, that you can, um, in the store, without not having to unpack the model, you can see the model exactly what, what you're buying. You can see it from the top. As usual, you can see it also from the bottom. So you can see by the landing gear, is that assembled straight? Is there anything um, that you don't like on this model? Then you can just place it back or give it give it to the cashier and say, uh, you know, better send this back. Something's not right with it. Um, that is the advantage of that. It, it just it just gives more clarity and um, hopefully helps retailers help the collectors just find their perfect model quicker. But I would like to go back to the point that if you look at your competitors, at least. Overall, obviously not in scale because you don't really have any in scale 500. But if you look at other um, die cast manufacturers, they make really beautiful boxes. Um, just look at, at NG models, for example, or even Gemini in scale 200, especially the boxes are really beautiful. And they don't have pictures 
off. They might have um, they might have renditions of the model itself, but they don't have pictures, and the boxes look really, really beautiful. I mean, they look like it's worth paying money for it. And I'm sorry, your boxes really don't. So um, I think uh, in this case, uh, we will have to agree to disagree on that. But um, at least, thanks very much for answering my questions. I think many of the questions that I asked, but also many of the other questions, were just burning questions in the community for a long time and it was really really good to get answers on that um, and kudos that you also took some of the more difficult questions because um, I acknowledge that some of them could not have been super easy for you to answer um, so that's really great. So that's pretty much all for the stream, at least um, the, the parts that I want to react to because there was plenty of other stuff but that, as I say, there was mainly for other scales. Um, but there were a lot of questions uh, regarding various models. And I have the list here, so let me just very quickly go through that. I will also put this list in the video description below so you can check it out once again yourself. Um, so let's just start. Eurowings 737-800, what did Harperwing say? Uh, that aircraft won't come as it's not in use after Corona. Basically, the 737-800s were leased by Eurowings and they will probably go back to the lessers. Um, Eurowings A319 is very likely in the future, but obviously we didn't get a date. Then there was a Eurowings 767-300. Harper will look into it, but again, this is also, or this was a short-term lease for Eurowings. So it's very unlikely that this will happen. KLM ERJ-175 is unlikely as it's more difficult to produce the 175 because it has, it has larger winglets and they said that they at the moment don't have the mold for that. Air Europa 737-800 was um, unknown because of the potential takeover by IAG. So they don't know if they really can make more Air Europe models in the future. Korean Air, that was a clear no. Etihad 787 choose liveries, there are various versions. Um, they said here that some are already in the works uh, and more to come, but they can't say if they will make all of them, but I think we can expect uh, a good chunk of them. 737 freighters, the 737 classics won't come, but 737-800 could be a possibility for the future. Louder motion is very unlikely after the Ryanair takeover. Austrian Airlines, many models are planned, but they are waiting for the final clearance. Um, but it's very likely to happen, so that's good news. North American single aisle, that was a clear yes. And we might even see a few new airlines from North America that we haven't had models from. Um, particularly, they were talking about, um, well, they didn't confirm Frontier, but Frontier was mentioned, and they didn't say clearly no to that. Um, DHL 777F freighter uh, would be possible for the future, but they still have uh, some, I think it's the A330 on stock. Um, and they won't make a new model before that stock has run out. Turkish Airlines 777F, they said perhaps, um, so that could potentially happen. They have made other Turkish cargo before, so that could happen again. Um, ERJ E2, um, what they said there was that they would definitely not make all new E2 types, but we could probably expect one or two of them. Um, I think the most likely will be the E2, uh, the 190. Um, and there was a specific question for that and there was the Helvetic ERJ 190E2 which they said would be a possibility for the future. Aegean A320 Neo Harper is working on it and I think that could probably happen. Uh, they did seem like they were quite optimistic about that. Air Mauritius A330 Neo is currently very unlikely because of the bankruptcy of the airline. TAP, uh, so TAP Air Portugal, more models are in development. Um, but it's too early to tell, and I guess they are still working out a license here. Iran Air Fokker 100 has been delayed by, I think, three years now, but they are saying it is now in production, so that's good news for all those who want to have this model. And then, in general, for Fokker 100, they say more is to come. They have more things planned that hasn't been announced yet, so if you like the Fokker 100, there will be more from Happer Wings. The Antonov 124 with an open nose, uh, they said it's not planned, but it's a nice idea for the future. That was what they said. Turkish Airlines A350-900 is definitely not coming in 2020, but they said it's very likely for the future. Um, 
any all Nippon Airlines models and that was a clear no. Um, then they were commenting on the Lot ERJs, our two special models that also have been delayed by at least two years, if not three. Um, and they said new license ready, but not signed. So they are still waiting for a lot. And of course, again, here, the whole Corona situation has put them very far down the priority list from airlines, obviously. Um, unfortunately, they were saying more about these lot models, but then the stream cut out. <laughs> so we couldn't hear the full answer. Um, so they might have said something really interesting, but we just don't know. United Airlines here, there was also a really interesting point because as I said, United Airlines is determining what aircraft types can be produced first by HAPA. Um, so they have basically decided what aircraft types HAPA is making in the new livery. So they're basically starting off with the flagships and then working their way down. But as HAPA said, it's very likely that they will go through more or less the entire fleet. Uh, but I guess then the smaller regional jets will just come more slowly than the larger wide body aircraft. Uh, then A380 stairs, that was very unlikely, but then they actually referred to that they perhaps could look into making jet bridges, which I think would be very much appreciated. And only speaking, I think it's quite astonishing. The A380 has been on the market since 2006, seven ish and we still haven't seen any jet bridges from HAPA Wings. I mean, they've sold the model pretty much since then. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, and then last but not least, the 737 MAX from Sun Express, which has been announced. And there was a specific question about that because it's Sun Express Germany and that airline has gone bankrupt or will be dissolved by Lufthansa. It's a joint venture between Lufthansa and Turkish Airlines. And they said that complicates this model um, uh, because they now don't know if they still have the, the, the rights uh, to make that model. So even though it has been announced, that model, I think we can expect a lengthy delay if it will at all be able to be released. So that's all for the stream. Um, one, I would like to thank HAPA for having made the stream because as I've said many times now, uh, it's really good when they're communica uh, communicating with the community. Um, they did take quite a lot of questions. They did take many of my questions, which I'm very grateful for. Um, but um, I really, really hope that HAPA will do this more frequently. It doesn't need to be every month or every two months, but um, I would say at least two or three times a year. That would be really awesome. Um, just to keep to in touch with the community and to get feedback from the community, because it does seem like you sometimes need that. So with that, I'd like to say thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found this useful. Uh, thanks so much for watching. I'm checking out and bye.